Hi. Yes, here we go again oh, with another completely impractical product on Indiegogo that's fleeced people out of their money. It's the water seer <laughs> designed to extract moisture from the air and produce clean drinking water. It's raised $329,000 on Indiegogo and it's not new but something has recently come up which I thought I'd talk about. And I don't want this to turn into a debunking video because uh, Thunderfoot has already completely busted this problem, wide open in many areas, which I can't which really add uh, much value to. But uh, so, so I'll link in Thunderfoot's debunking video down by below. It's very comprehensive, 31 minutes comprehensive. Thank you very much. But one of the main reasons why it won't work is uh, for what I've done before in the Fontas uh, self-filling water bottle. It's essentially the same thing. It comes down to latent heat and actually uh, extracting moisture from the air, dehumidifiers and things like that, and the energy required to do that. So I'll link in my video where I do back of the envelope uh, calculations for that. Yes, and I actually mailed it to them. And it's basically the uh, same thing here. We've got a vein on the top here, which sucks in the, uh, the warm, humid air down the shaft. So it's uh, completely wind powered down the shaft here, um, down into the cooler into a big bulb which is buried uh, six foot down into the, the cooler surrounding soil and the theory goes that hey because it's cooler it's the water will uh, condense and then you know uh, pull the moisture out of the air it'll be dehumidified and then you've got this uh, little hand pump here which then this little animated person here just pumps the fresh clean drinking water out let's not get into the fresh clean part of it but anyway pumps the water out and bobs your uncle right no. One of the main problems, of course, is that you have to expend energy. Energy has to be expended to extract uh, moisture from the air, and it takes a lot of energy to do this. So one of them, there's a lot of issues with this, which uh, we won't get into. But one of the main ones is that it basically heats up the surrounding uh, soil around here. It must, and when it does, it will basically just stop working. So you might, you know, extract a little bit of water from this thing, you know, over you know an hour or something like that. But then it'll just heat up too much, and the soil won't be able to dissipate the amount of power required, and the, the system it'll just stop working it's basic thermodynamics at play here and it, it's just it is physically incapable of doing what they claim and they want to make it out that this is gonna you know save all the th third world with you know clean drinking water which is an admirable uh you know thing to strive for for sure but you know hey we're gonna save the world and we're gonna give them all fresh clean drinking water and Sorry, no. The basic laws of uh, thermodynamics and engineering say it ain't going to work. But hey, if you just want to quickly look at some basic back of the envelope calculations, just like I did for the Fontas uh, self-filling water bottle, you're talking about the latent heat equation and the gas to liquid uh, phase change and just the amount of energy required to do that. We won't get into the dew point and the whole you know uh, thing, but you know back of the envelope stuff, uh, they claim over here um, 37 liters of uh, water per day. That's 37 kilograms a day, and it basically requires um, 2,300 kilograms joules per uh, kilogram or you know roughly of that order which is 85,000 kilojoules uh, just to produce that 37 liters of water that they're claiming that 85,000 kilojoules is 23,600 watt hours and over the span of 24 hours that's a thousand watts continuous that is going to be dissipated must be dissipated in this bulb uh, down here into the surrounding soil. That's a radiant bar heater continuously for 24 hours. And well, come on, in a dry, arid region where there's no water, I don't think we're going to have very good heat sinking around this bulb. It's just going to dry up and it's not going to work. This is ridiculous. And of course, that's why they only have fancy animations and they don't actually have any real prototypes. What they've done is they've actually um, got some students to work on this thing. I No, this is getting into a debunking video. Anyway, they've got some students from a university, UC Berkeley, uh, the National Peace Corps, to make it sound, you know, really good. They've been, they basically had some students working on some design contests for these uh, sorts of things, but they don't have a real functioning prototype. 
producing that 37 litres a day. And there's a reason for it. It's because it's bloody well not going to work. And those sorts of ballpark calculations are backed up when you go look at uh, dehumidifiers. You look at uh, some of the most efficient dehumidifiers on the market, like uh, this Frigier one, for example, and you look at their data for this, you know, they extract 1.85 litres of water from the air for every kilowatt hour of energy uh, used. So uh, basically that's um, 44 uh, litres odd uh, water per day. And if you do that um, and look at the calculations for these things, it requires... Um, a thousand watts continuous. So it's basically the same as in the amount of energy that must be dissipated to actually do this. So there's nothing new here at all. The, the science of these things is very basic. It's very well understood. And of course, it's going to depend on the environment that you're in. Environments that have, uh, you know, uh, dry, arid environments with very little rain aren't going to have a lot of wind and a high humidity to drive this thing. It's like... Oh. Anyway, I didn't want to debunk this. The thing I wanted to talk about is you expect to see this sort of stuff, uh, you know, slick videos and slick marketing material and everything else and a slick concept that Joe Average can get behind you. You expect to see this sort of impractical crap just retweeted by the modern uh, media. You know, you expect to see it on Gizmodo and other, you know, and like just uncredible websites. You just publish, you know, fancy stuff like this with slick marketing material and they don't do an ounce of uh, vetting of this or you know putting on their thinking cap or even you know searching to see if anyone has any questions about this they just you know oh we, we've got to get views oh this will get us a lot of views we'll put this up and so you expect to see it where you don't expect to see this is in a science magazine a reputable science magazine like popular science and that's exactly what we see in the latest issue. Oh. And here it is in their latest March, April 2017 edition, an article on the water seer, basically just rehashing the same marketing crap that water seer have put out. They haven't put an ounce of thought or reason into this and this is in their print edition. It's not like they just whack this on you know their blog website or whatever. It made it to print. Oh, how embarrassing. And there's not a single ounce of scientific questioning of the claims of something like this. They just, they just didn't bother. Unbelievable. And this is not written by a nobody either. It's written by uh, Sarah Effect, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, who's the assistant editor at Popular Science. And she should know better. Like, she has a, a Bachelor of Science in Biology and a Master's degree in uh, Science um, Education and stuff like that. I mean, it, let alone the editor and whoever vets these sort of articles. They didn't think to even fact check this. Are you kidding me? And hey, to be somewhat fair, I can maybe understand why they may have uh, missed this one because this issue is all about the state of water in our world. All the articles are about water and there's like there's dozens and dozens of articles and stuff like that. So obviously they just went out uh, trawling for uh, you know, anything to do with you know, uh, water, new technology for uh, water and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe, okay, they overlooked the fact checking on this one, but it still doesn't excuse it. And hey, this is not that hard. Let me Google that for you. Type in water seer, Google search, and these results would have been available when they were putting this uh, uh, package together. Look, the waterseer.org, Indiegogo, and what have we got at number four? On October 24th, Thunderfoot's busted video. And what else have we got? Is it bullshit? Um, they're talking about it on Reddit down here. Like, it's not hard. And sure, you can go in and watch Thunderfoot's uh, video. He's a, you know, an accredited uh, scientist, a respected scientist who's looked at the figures, but hey, science doesn't work on authority, right? Instantly, they should have smelt, hmm, <laughs> yeah, there's something wrong with this, okay? Two seconds, Googling this, okay, I'll investigate further. Hey, we're, we're popular science, let's go in and, and, and just fact check, do some basic back of the envelope stuff, you know, take five, ten minutes to do this. And they could have went, no, okay, this is likely bullshit, no, we're just, just not going to bother putting it in the issue. Okay, 
fine. Or, hey, it'd be nice if publications like Popular Science actually did some debunking of, you know, pseudoscience crap like this. That'd be nice. And do they? I don't know. Sorry, I'm not a regular reader of uh, Popular Science. But, hey, if they, you know, at least don't put it in your print magazine. Simple search would have raised questions about this thing that you could have easily done the calculations of fact check yourself. Unbelievable. And ironically, in the very same issue, in the editorial no less, editor Joe Brown uh, says this, We did drink water as we brainstormed, reported, designed, wrote, copy edited, photographed, fact checked, and so on. Ah, oh, yeah, well you didn't fact check the water seer, did you? So that is just completely embarrassing and they need to retract this in the next issue and say, hey, look, sorry, we didn't, we forgot to fact check in all the fury and everything else. We just, you know, didn't have our thinking cap on for that one. And sorry, we shouldn't have published that. And hey, it'd be nice, as I said, if they published a debunking of uh, stuff like this. That'd be terrific. Um, and what you'd expect in a science, you know, a popular science journal like Popular science and i'm being hard on them because like i expect more from a popular science journal especially in you know today's fake news environment that everyone's talking about and everyone's just publishing and reposting and doing everything just to get the clicks and they're not you know who cares if it's uh, true or not it, it sounds great and it's going to get the people in no you know, these sort of publications need to be held to a higher standard especially when it makes it to print. So anyway, I hope we see a retraction in a future issue. It'll be interesting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got a comment on this and what they should do about it, um, leave it in the comments down below or on the EEV blog forum linked in down below. Catch you next time.